Swear to me that everything that you've said about the Fireflies is true. I swear. The Last of Us, which came out in 2013, it was created by PlayStation and uh, Naughty Dog. And if you really think about it, this is what made Naughty Dog like the Pixar of the game industry. This is what made them this like prestige. Like you had a Charted, which was this big, you know, action popcorn shove your face action with. These, these great explore characters that you invested and care about and all that kind of stuff. And then you had Last of Us. That was this dreary, depressed world with a little bit of light but not much of it. That made them have all these character developments onto, onto a whole different level. That made you cry in the first 15 minutes. That made you be emotionally engage and, and just be shocked at what you are seeing in a more in an engaging way and here's the thing it took me a while for me actually experience the story like here's the thing I, I, I don't play games for the gameplay I play games for the story and I kept hearing that you know the last verse is all oh by god it's so well done so well done so well done so well done so knowing that the sequel at the time was like you know, was like a year away, I decided to pick out the Wii Masters to see what people were talking about. So I picked it up, and if you really think about it, this is a story, and people were worried by the way about it. But this is a story where the plot is not actually the beginning, middle, and end. The actual plot is the relationship between Joel and Ellie, and that was the hooking point for me that was for this for this first game it was the hooking point that election the growth of you know seeing uh joel who has lost everything and kind of slowly feeling that hole that he's missing not a placing it i try not to spoil first game much just in case like you know tv show wise um but you you have that you you know, he but not placing it but he, but someone who can kind of feel that spot that that he missed 20 years ago and it's absolute well done well written with really a multiple scenes like you again like over and over and over again and it's it, it was very interesting talking you know leading up to part two and knowing the links and knowing what well, like here's the, i didn't look at the links i didn't saw any comments the only thing i knew about the links was um the one the new characters is, characters is a transgender character which i was like okay fine because personally i don't really give two shits if a character's gay like ellie's gay in 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 part two i didn't really care about that um for me i was like hey ellie's gay cool great awesome uh we have a transgender cat cool great awesome i wasn't this type of person who was like oh my god you know they're shoving the you know left wing uh, political gender down our throats uh, i wasn't i i i'm still ain't and I never will be that because if you are like that, you do not know how storytelling works. You simply don't. Storytelling works, uh, games and movies and TV shows and books and comics, all that kind of stuff, is, how to say, is art. It's a form of art. And you... And art affects the real world, and the art, and the real world affects the art. And the last time I checked, transgender, you know, transgender people and, and gay people exist in the real world. So saying that they're shoving stuff down your throats just because that's how the world we live in 
it kind of makes you not understand how storytelling works in that format. So I didn't, that, that was the only link I, I, I saw was, hey, there's a transgender character. Um, which, once again, I gave two shits about. But I, I haven't played part two. But I watched like a, like a good chunk, like a eight hour, nine hour movie thing. Sat down, or, you know, Ubi eat cinema popcorn and watch part two. And this is going to be my thoughts and my review of not the game, but the story of part two. The, the story of The Last of Us part two. <laughs> Part two, the best way I can swipe this story for this game is that is that the first game felt like a movie that was winning Oscars and winning awards, so far and center. And this one, part two, felt like the film and the sequel that was really solid and really well done but had some issues and it is going to win any awards. That's what it felt like. Because the first, I don't know, several hours of it is captivating. A great slow burn, but you're captivating and, and the mentally of Ellie. Because in this, it's, I mean, this is a, a story all about Avenge. This is a story all about Avenge. Uh, Spoiler alert, once again, Joel gets killed by this character named uh, Abby. And Ellie is set on revenge to, to kill said Abby along with all the people that Abby was with when Joel, uh, when she uh, whacked um, Joel with a golf club. And, and so you have this kind of event story. The thing is, you could easily have this event story as a very simple, typical, paid by numbers thing where it's just Ellie going, fuck everything, like the grief is taking over, I, I'm going to take this motherfucker down, and every motherfucker, like, she could easily do, do that, and being that, they could go that technical, stereotypical route of a event story, but what this story is, it's not about the physical of of avenge but it's mental like what does that take on you there's a certain moments where she takes someone's life and it's ellie she has done that she has taken life before but this time it's personal this time and when she does it she is a stalk and traumatized and she is um how you know uh how she's puking on she's thinking she's about to puke and it's because it's personal and 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 how what does that do with someone's personality what does that do to someone's psyche um and kind of going the physical aspects of a event plot and it does it really well really really well done it is a slow burn it's last of us you know even the first game is a slow burn story but this one just pulls the punches really well. Now the stuff I didn't like and felt like it just dragged was about a, a, a good chunk of it. Uh, several hours has passed and then the story halts when a giant chunk of it is surrounded by Abby. Now at the beginning I'm like okay sense you have abby explain her motivations the whole her dad was 
part, her dad was part of the Fireflies, that Joel killed at the end of the first game, and, you know, I get that. And, but then they kind of, like, did the whole thing of, let us show you what Abby was doing when Ellie was doing her stuff. And this, personally, I just felt it's just unnecessary. It just halted the story completely still. It just halted everything. And I just, it, it kind of showed that when we're not with Ellie, when we're not with Joel for, let's say, the first game, that's when it kind of falls apart a little bit. They are the glue that holds everything together. And when you take that away, you just realize, None of these characters that are that interesting except the main two. You know, all of these supporting characters are there to move the characters, the, the main character, in this case Ellie, forward. Because, yeah, the, the, the supporting characters ain't that memorable. They're not. Like, Jesse's just an old man. Diana's a little bit mad. Like, oh, you have these mere characters. But what makes you engaged by them is Ellie and her um, reaction to it. Um, and here's the thing, you get flashbacks with Joel and you have this nice you know, daughter, father-daughter relationship when Ellie finds out about the truth, about she was there to save the world, like save, like she was the cure for everything. That's a real world scene and see that relationship kind of tear apart. And it's just really well handled. And I, I and I will say this, I'll finish this off. This story ends in a way that I like sometimes you say the words, I can't think how they can do a sequel. No, this one definitely books ends. Like they're not doing a Last of Us three. You know, uh Ellie's story is done. Uh, definitely Joel's story is done, all the characters that we are set, that is set in is done, it's just, it's just, it feels, it feels like, uh, it does feel like a complete story, it does feel, the first, these two games, these two stories are pieced together in a way that just feels like you just went episode one to episode two and you ha get a whole full package, it's just, it's a shame there's a good chunk of it that just didn't uh, gel as well, and it wasn't was kind of unnecessary for the plot. Um, but yeah, Last of Us Part Two, I'll say it's solid. I'll say it's like you had the first one that's like a ten out of ten, right? This one's like an eight out of ten. 